I only have one thing here, and it's Trevor Lawrence. And I guess I will say this. If I want to go, I'll go to the the Jaguars win because I can come up with plenty of ways the Cowboys win because. But the Jaguars win because Trevor Lawrence throws for 70% or better completion rate. Last game against Tennessee, 30 of 42 for 368, three touchdowns. Ran for a touchdown. He's not much of a runner. The thing is, he is fast and ran the ball well uh, at Clemson, but he just doesn't do it in the NFL. But that was a 714 uh, percent completion rate the game before 58 54.8 they lost and got blown out the game before 29 of 37 for 321 and 78 uh percent completion percentage three touchdowns they beat baltimore 28 27 uh so you just start looking at it and you go now he has been completing a high percentage besides that detroit game but you just look at it when he does this they win the team that they lost to when he completed a high percentage recently, they lost to Kansas City at Kansas City. He was 29 of 40 for 259 yards and two touchdowns, no interceptions. And they lost 27 to 17. So there is an exception there in the last five games. But for the most part, he's completing over 70%. They are winning. So Jacksonville wins because Trevor Lawrence completes 70% of his passes. If he does that, you're in big trouble uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. I'll say Cowboys win because because they don't turn over the ball. I'm Ooh. just going to go with the, Which Dak's done a lot of the fumbled punt. Dak has been turning over the ball a lot. I don't think the Cowboys in the last game, they almost lost and probably should have lost, but they didn't. And they turned the ball over three times, right? Muff punt, two interceptions. Mm -hmm. The Cowboys can't lose the, the turnover battle here. If they lose the turnover battle in Jacksonville, I think Jacksonville wins this game. Because, you, I mean, to keep a bad team from having more opportunities, yeah. you can't be giving the, the ball to them. Like, yeah. that's how the Cowboys uh, steamrolled the, the Colts. That's how they did what they did against the Minnesota Vikings. They said, we're, we're going to get the ball from you. I mean, they did it right out of the gate. Micah Parsons comes around the corner and says, go to the ground. I got you. Now our football. And then the Cowboys have an extra possession that they weren't supposed to have earlier than they should have. I mean, you got a really good point there. I, I do... When I hear Dak Prescott say they can't happen anymore, that's why I asked Mickey that earlier. I, I just don't know if I trust Dak Press if he trusts himself with some of the things that he's seeing. And I, there are moments when, man, listen, there are moments when Dak is awesome. But I have I watched last week against the Texans where how many times did he pump fake before he threw a ball that, you, that really didn't even look good anyway? And you were like, why is he... He and looked like he was afraid to let go, let it lose. To your point, and it, it's not that Dak has bad arm strength, but do you notice when he doesn't, this is why the Tom House and getting his legs into the throw is so important. He doesn't have the strongest arm. He can't throw off balance or without using his hips and his legs and throw the ball hard. There are some runs like on the run where he'll do something special, but you're right. He wants to be planted a certain way. Yeah. It's just that a guy like Trevor Lawrence or these guys that are these premium guys that have powerful arms, at times they can get their legs taken out from under them or not have a pump fake, but like a pump fake where, oh no, and then they, they only can throw with their upper body or their arm and they can still put some zip on the ball. Dak will struggle with that. And that's why it's so important that he has proper mechanics is that he needs all of it to throw those bullets. And he does have a good arm, but he has to have his whole body in position to have that good arm uh, that you see from Dak. I think Cowboys win because their running game is their, it's what they hang their hat on. Okay. And they can do it again this week. I think this is a, a defense that isn't that great at making stops when they need to. Uh, Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville. I'm I I was saying that Tony Pollard's not going to get you 1500 yards. He's got 894 right now. Do you think there's a chance? And I know he got a lot of carries when he Better Zeke get could. over 1000. I yeah. know that. Well, that's what do you think that he can get to 1200? Like do you, like that's a that's a tough 300 goal to get more to yards and change in four yes. games. Yes, that being said, there's there is the if when we go off of how much can a guy get I start looking at the Cowboys and Eagles schedule, and I don't think the Cowboys are going to try get week set. Well, week 18, I guess the last game of the season, the 17th game of the season, so you'll I, see some Malik Davis, I think will mean absolutely nothing to the Cowboys. So I do think Cooper rush will be the quarterback. Malik Davis will be the running back. I, I think that 
you almost have to look at it as he only really has two more games. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Because you have three games left or four. Uh, you have you Jacksonville, have Philadelphia, Tennessee, and then Washington. Washington. Yeah. So I think he has three games left to get those stats. I don't think he plays in the last game of the year. The So I still think it's possible, right? Because you're looking at yeah. averaging a, a hundred and in just a little bit more. He has a chance. I would lean towards a no. If you if they had to play the fourth game, if it meant everything, so the Cowboys would have to win out, right? The Cowboys win their next three games. That last game means something because if Philadelphia loses the last game of the year and you win the last game of the year, you t- you overtake them and you win the division. You know who leads the team in rushing touchdowns this year? For the Cowboys? Uh-huh. Is it t- Pollard? This is a trick question. Zeke and Pollard are tied with nine. Okay. So you got 18 touchdowns out of the running back. Out of the running back rushing this year. That's very good. That's and very good. That's more than one a game. The And then Math. Tony Pollard has added uh, three receiving touchdowns. Zeke's added one. So that's out of that position, you've gotten 22 touchdowns. Very, I mean, like they're very important for the season. The big plays, this is something interesting, Mike, because we did like, we were trying to keep track of this a lot with Ezekiel Elliott the last couple of years. Zeke has four 20 plus yard rushes this year. And I don't know, like, that I've seen this kind of Zeke that we've seen the last few weeks in a long time. And maybe it's because he had a couple games off in the middle of the season, early in the season. He was able to kind of get a a little break because he was injured. But that break now, you're seeing, I think, a different runner right now. And that's that's where I think Cowboys win because what their running game is doing is effective. And I think they'll continue to be effective. Dak's going to probably have a, a... probably going to have like 265 yards. He's going to throw for two touchdowns, maybe an interception. And that's kind of where Dak is going to be at this point. And I think that uh, that's going to be enough to get a win. Now, from the other side, Jacksonville wins because they can't stop Travis Etienne. And I'm not saying he's a world beater. He's a good running back. 814 yards this year. Uh, He's got six big plays. That's 20 plus yards. He is a dynamite receiver out of the backfield as well. And that's a relationship. We talk about the Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Trevor Lawrence and Etienne, like they know what they're supposed to see. He had a, he had trouble holding on to the ball early in the season. He's kind of had those moments where you're like, whoa, this is the NFL, buddy. You can't be giving up the ball like that. But I do think that uh, I do think that Travis Etienne is a, is a, a huge factor in this game this week. Okay. And that's something that they're going to have to take care of. Also, Jermichael Hasty. Uh, and then somebody said Malik uh, Davis did run for a touchdown also. So you got another touchdown from your running back position as well. What's weird is when Trevor Lawrence has a really good game, like last week, Etienne doesn't fall. They they rarely yeah. have good games together. It's either one doing something or the other. And when Trevor Lawrence doesn't have a good game, they've literally lost every game. Trevor uh, J- Travis Etienne last week, 17 carries, 32 yards, and they had a great game. That being said, when you look at Etienne can destroy the Cowboys. He can be a guy out of the backfield that can literally take over a game if he gets the right matchups, they get him in space, this and that. But if you look at some of his bigger games, 14 carries for 114 yards against the Giants, loss. 24 carries for 156 yards against Denver, loss. They did 28 carries for 109 yards. They did win and they beat Las Vegas. But it's interesting, some of his bigger games, they haven't won. Mm-hmm. But I hear what you're saying. I don't want tra- – if Travis Etienne to start the game, let's just say they drive the ball down the field to start the game and Travis Etienne has, let's say, five carries for 40 yards. We're going to be like, crap. But at the same time, that hasn't ultimately led to success for Jacksonville winning the game. For Jacksonville specifically, yes. Yeah. And, and that's where kind of it's the balance of where the Cowboys are bad at and what they're good at. And the Cowboys aren't great at stopping the run. So if a team can run the ball against them, we saw it with the Houston Texans. They were like, we're going to just keep running the football and not give you a billion opportunities to go destroy us with your passing game. And and that's where where I think it is, is they try to limit the ability of the Cowboys to have productive offense. I'm super surprised with this. Travis Etienne, 25 catches for 214 yards this year. Wouldn't you think what we saw from him from Clemson, it, that would be better and more? Yes, but the fact that 
Christian Kirk has now turned into a more productive target. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that Zay Jones, who isn't great, um, has been, you know, has 600 yards. Evan Ingram's actually catching some footballs. Uh, yeah, he had a great which, game last he's week. so weird. Evan Ingram's just the weirdest. He if should he's healthy, be, he's good. He should be dominant. Uh, and he just has not been. Marvin Jones Jr. is okay. But, like, I think the fact that Christian Kirk, who they really overspent on, has been productive lately, I think that's one of the factors is they, they do want to try to take advantage of the downfield stuff as opposed to just chipping away with, uh, with Etienne underneath. But the other thing, too, Mike, is with the Cowboys' defense, they're at their best whenever they can say, all right, we're going at you, quarterback. We're going we're going to take you down today. And whenever good teams run the ball well against them, they don't get that opportunity as much to force those kinds of turnovers and sacks and stuff like this. And the 6-8-2, Dallas wins because Micah pretends T-Law is Jalen Hurts. Dallas loses because T-Law goes Joe Montana on us. I, I think everything, a lot of people are pinning ev this game on Trevor Lawrence, which yeah. is rightfully so. Like, he's the he's the quarterback that he, a has a lot of hopes. He's completing 66% of his passes. If you hold him to 66%, he hasn't won a game this year. If he's, I mean, literally, I, that's just a crazy stat. Because 70% is a high percentage. And if he doesn't complete 70% of his balls, they haven't won a game this year. From the 817, Cowboys win because Micah is due for a breakout game again. Micah, like they, the whole. He might be getting tired. The whole he defensive line looked a little meh last he week. He mentioned to, wasn't it to Von Miller where he said, I think it was in the Von Miller podcast. Yes. It might have been just an no, interview. It was, that, it was with Von Miller. And he's like, dude, I'm beat up right now. Like playing, playing this defensive end, the majority of the snaps is wearing me down, and I wasn't as wore down last year at this point because I was playing more linebacker. Yeah, he said he was fresh. He said somebody touches you on every play when you're playing defensive end. You know, when you're playing linebacker, you may never, you may not get touched for six or seven. You may not get touched for two series. And remember, Dan Quinn and the Dallas Cowboys are learning more and more about their Micah Parsons, the, mm -hmm. best, the best defensive player in the NFL. I do believe he is, but... They were like, hey, look what he did last year. Let's put him at defensive end a little bit more. We had these discussions, right? And it seemed like, yeah, let's put him at defensive end more. But now they're going to get another season under their belt and go, hey, maybe we shouldn't put him at defensive end that much because we did wear him down. Or maybe he has a great playoff run and you're like, hey, when it was nut cutting time and it was time to do it, he was once again the best defensive player in the NFL. Dude, he gives up like 70, 80 pounds in a lot of situations to the guys that he's going up against. While he has speed... You know, the body ha is taking that that toll on him. And I totally get that part of, like, that was different than last year. I was a little bit fresher at the end of the season, and I'm just trying to... He said the other day, Mike, you got to build the calluses. The muscles have to learn how to do it. So that, he's in a mindset of, I'm just, like, uh, you, I just have to deal with it and overcome it. And that's just the only thing that can happen, rather than give me some rest or let me do anything else. But I think whenever if uh, if the plays don't continue to happen, Cowboys got to look into some other things. Mike McCarthy does a pretty good job at that.